Hey guys, in this video we are going to learn how to create switchable objects using blueprints. As you can see, it gives the player the ability to choose between different objects by pressing a key on the keyboard. This feature is pretty useful in ArcFizz projects, but of course you can use this system in your games or any other project you are working on. So let's jump into it and get started. Let's start by creating a blueprint. Just right click in your content browser, hit blueprint class and choose actor. Name it BP chair and open it up. Open the viewport tab so you can see the components we are going to add to our blueprint. First of all, we need static meshes for our chairs so hit add in your components tab and type static mesh and add it to the blueprint. We are going to have three kinds of chairs so we need three static meshes. Just select it and hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V to create a duplicate. Do it again and now as you can see we have static mesh, static mesh 1 and static mesh 2. But to avoid any confusion later in the process you can name them static mesh 1, 2 and 3. Now when I select them in their details tab there is a section for the static mesh we want to use. So hit control and space to open your content browser and navigate to your static mesh which you want to choose and drag it into this section. Do the same process for static mesh 2 and 3 and make sure that after you add them to the blueprint they are all in the same location. And also check if they are completely on the ground. Okay, now what we're gonna do is uncheck the visibility for the static mesh 2 and 3. Just select them and in the details tab find visibility and uncheck them. This basically means that the default chair is going to be static mesh 1 and when we cycle through them, number 1 will be invisible and number 2 will be visible. Following the same logic, we can create a loop which will be done in the events graph. First of all, we need to enable input so we can use the keyboard in game. Just drag a wire from the event begin node and type enable input. Then right click in the blank space and type get player controller. Plug it into the enable input node and now you are good to go. We also don't need these guys so let's get rid of them real quick. Okay, now what we're gonna do is dedicate the key on the keyboard for the player to use in game. So right click and type keyboard and select one of these guys. It doesn't matter which one because here using this button you can choose any key on the keyboard quickly. So hit it and for example choose E. Now you can see it's changed to E key. Drag a wire from its pressed output and create a multi gate. What this node does is that it outputs one of these pins here every time we hit E on the keyboard. It basically gives us the ability to cycle through several outputs and create a loop. The function we want to use is set visibility. So right click and type set visibility and add it to the event graph. We need six of these guys so hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V to create them. Drag a wire from output 0 in the multi gate and plug it in. Then plug the set visibility node to the next one this way. The logic is that when we press E for the first time, we want the static mesh 1 to get invisible. So drag it into the event graph and plug it into the target input. Now in the set visibility node, make sure that new visibility is unchecked. We also want static mesh 2 to get visible simultaneously after the E key is pressed. So drag your static mesh 2 into the event graph and plug it into the second set visibility node and check the visibility option. Now let's compile and see how it's working. Yeah, as you can see when I hit E, our first static mesh gets invisible and the second one gets visible. We just need to continue the same logic to create a loop for our three static meshes. By the way, if you want to learn how to create this sliding door or how to create switchable materials, just click these links. So let's go back to our event graph and continue. When I press E for the second time in game, output 1 in the multi gate will be activated. Now what we want is that static mesh 2 to get invisible and static mesh 3 to get visible. Just drag them to the event graph and plug static mesh 2 into the left one and static mesh 3 to the right one. 
make sure that static mesh 2 visibility is unchecked and static mesh 3 visibility is checked now add another pin in the multi gate and repeat the same process for it here we want static mesh 3 to get invisible and static mesh 1 to get visible so plug them in and set their visibility like the other lines now check the loop option in the multi gate to create a loop for the outputs and compile Let's play the game and as we can see it's working perfectly. We have done the main part of the job but we need to add another feature to the blueprint. When the player gets near the chair we should tell him what key should be pressed and also we don't want the key to work from everywhere in the level. In other words we want a boundary around the chair and when the player enters it he can see the instructions and also giving input gets enabled. Go back to the blueprint and open the viewport tab. In the components tab, hit add and type box collision. This box is the area that when the player gets into, the blueprint gets activated. So scale it up and make sure it has enough space for the player to get into. Again hit add and type text render. Place it above the chair and in its details tab, change its text to press E. Now make it invisible so whenever we go into the collision box it gets visible and when we go out it gets invisible again. If you want to have icons for the chairs you can add 3 planes to the blueprint and assign a material to them. Just hit add and select plane. Duplicate it 2 times and place them above the text render. Now create a material for each of them and assign a photo of the chair to the base color. You can also add a constant zero to the roughness to make it glossy and look nice. After you assign the materials and place them properly just uncheck their visibility to make them behave exactly like the text render. Now let's go to the event graph and finish the job. In your components tab, right click on the box collision and in the add event select on component begin overlap. Do it again and select on component end overlap too. Now create a disable input node and connect these 5 nodes together like this. This means that when our player gets into the zone giving input will be enabled and when he gets out it gets disabled. Our last part is that we want the text render on our three planes to get visible when the player enters the box and become invisible when he gets out. So create a set visibility function and duplicate it. Connect the enable and disable input functions to them like this. Now we should define the targets, so drag them into the event graph and connect them to the functions. Check the new visibility for the first function and uncheck it for the next one. And that's it, it's all we need to do here, so let's compile and play the game. Yeah, it's working and if you want to learn more about Unreal Engine 5, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, see you next time.